Hello everyone, in today's video I will provide you a brief introduction to the method of least squares. If you do not have enough time to watch this video, you can always read the post that you can see over here. This post nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given in the description below. Before we start, we need to provide an answer to the following question. Why is the least squares method so special? Well, this method serves as the basis of many estimation and control algorithms. Consequently, every engineer as well as other scientists should have a working knowledge and basic understanding of this important method. In order to explain the least squares method, I will be focusing on a simple linear model that you can see over here. In practice, this linear model represents our measurement equation. The variable yi is the observed variable or the measured variable and we are, we are assuming that we have s observed variables. The goal of the least squares method is to estimate xj variables and we are assuming that we have n variables xj that is j goes from 1 to n so the least squares problem can be formulated as follows given the observed variables y1 y2 until ys estimate x1, x2 until xn. In practice, the observed variables yi are always corrupted by the measurement noise and the measurement noise is represented in this equation by yi. Here it should be emphasized that the noise term is not known a priori all we can know are the statistical properties of the noise that can be estimated from the data. So consequently, we assume that the measurement noise is zero, mean, and that this equation holds true. That is, that its variance is equal to sigma i squared. That is, the variance is known. Consequently, we are assuming that the noise is zero, mean, and that its variance is known. You can always relax these assumptions and you can state the least squares problem and solve it without any a priori assumptions on the measurement noise. Okay, so how to solve this problem? Well, we can write down the system of equations 1 as a single matrix equation given by the equation 3. In this equation, the vector y collects all the observed variables the matrix L collects the terms L, I, J from this equation and the vector X collects, collects the variables that we want to estimate and finally the vector V is the measurement noise vector. The equation 3 can be compactly written as the equation 4. The next problem that we need to address in order to solve the least squares problem is how to quantify the prediction accuracy of our model. So let us assume that we have estimated our variables x over here. And how can we quantify the prediction accuracy of our model? Well, we can compute the error the error between the observed variables, yi, and the predictions of our model that are given by this term over here. The equation 5 can be compactly written as the equation 6 in the vector form where the vector e, the vector e that you can see over here, collects all the errors, all the prediction errors. 
The main idea of the least squares method is to penalize the weighted sum of squares of the errors. This weighted sum is called the cost function. In the case of the least squares method, the cost function has the following form that you can see over here. Let us analyze this cost function. This cost function consists of the weighted sum of the terms that look like this. So we are dividing the error, or actually the square of the error, by the noise variance. And you might naturally ask me the following question. Why do we need to divide the square of the error by the noise variance? Why don't we just take the simple sum of the errors? To explain you the importance of dividing the squares of the errors by the variances, I will construct the following scenario. For example, imagine that, that the observed variable yi is contaminated by noise and imagine that the noise is significant. Consequently, these observed variables will be unreliable and consequently their errors will be presumably very large. Now, what do we want to do? In the cost function, we somehow want to incorporate that knowledge that the observed variable yi is not reliable. So we need to scale down its, its square of the error. We need to scale it down by the effect of the noise. So since the noise in this case will be significant, variance will be extremely large. So the, the total effect of this term, for example, imagine that i is equal to 2, in the overall, overall sum will be relatively small since the variance will be large. So in that sense, and using this principle, we can incorporate some a priori knowledge about the accuracy of our measurements. And we can basically as you can prove using some mathematical derivations that I'm not going to explain in this short video, we can show that the least squares estimate has a minimum variance and that it's optimal in some sense. The equation 8 can be written in the compact form given by the equation 9, where in the equation 9 the matrix W will collect all the weights. So the W will be diagonal matrix and every element will be 1 over the variance of the corresponding measurement noise. So once we have written the cost function by equation 9, we can simply state the least squares problem in mathematical form and the mathematical form is given by the equation 11. So we are minimizing with respect to x the weighted error or the two norm the weighted two norm of the error so how to solve the least squares problem given by the equation 11 the first step is to expand the cost function and the expanded form is given by the equation 12 the next step is to compute the gradient of this cost function and to set it to zero so how to compute the gradient of this cost function well, if you click on the link that I provided in the post, you will obtain the matrix cookbook. This short book summarizes basic rules and basic equations involving matrix derivatives and derivatives of scalar expressions with respect to vectors. So in order to compute the gradient of the cost function, we need two rules. The first rule is given by the equation 69 and the second rule is given by the equation 81. So by applying these rules to our problem, we can compute the gradient of the cost function. These two terms are computed using the rule 69 given in the matrix cookbook 
And the derivative of this term over here that you can see over here is computed using the equation 81. So the final expression for the gradient will be given by the equation 15. And by setting the gradient to 0, we arrive at the system of normal equations. By solving these equations, but that is by solving the equation 16, we obtain our least squares estimate. So in our next post, we are going to explain how to implement the least squares method in Python and C++. I'm going to make a video about that. I hope that you like this video and that you find this video useful. If you like this video, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.